Hi everyone, how's it going? I've got the bloody bonnet on again because I have been very neglectful of my hair. I'm long overdue for a haircut. Anyway, I hope you guys are well. Once again, how are my fellow TIs doing? Please let me know in the comment section how you guys are getting along. Um, I always like to hear from you. Shout out to some of you for lending your two cents with my last video. I really appreciate it. So... Without further ado, all I'm doing really is just giving you guys an update on everything that's been going on. Um, you haven't been hearing from me because the tactics of the gang stalking have not been all that new. It's just a lot of the same thing. Um, in terms of today, it's just been... You guys know I like to sing, right? I like to sing around the house and because I've got like lots of ADHD and stuff like that, I can sing little snippets here and there. So... Remember that part of the street theatre of gang stalking is to imitate you, right? So basically, like, during the start of the day, it was like a lot of loud singing, something about a fight song. Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Sorry, I don't give a shit. I'm just telling you, to, just, just to tell you, really, like, it's just... But it's like, you know, there, there was loud singing and stuff like that and some taunting. I don't know what was going on. I, I couldn't really understand because I didn't care that much. So there was that going on. Um, but there was also some spying going on as well because I was watching something on my laptop. And um, basically, the one of the perps was standing by the door. The mother was standing by the door listening in on what was going on. What they're waiting for is for me to think out loud to have a dissociative episode so that they can get something on me that they can use. Now, because I used to have dissociative episodes and think out loud, sometimes for hours, uh, what I would say to myself would be used against me as weapons, you know, you know, psyops, right? Psyops nonsense. So it would be used against me usually in a bid to try to rattle me with something because it's kind of embarrassing because vocalising your thoughts out loud, it can be really embarrassing. Everybody thinks about nonsense. <laughs> everybody thinks nonsense, but like not everybody says it out loud. So it can be embarrassing when you have it mirrored back to you. But in this particular case, I've been really, really quiet. And it's not because I'm choosing to be quiet. It's just that I have a lot of stuff on my mind right now. Um, you know, I have a lot of stuff on my mind. There's a lot going on um, in my life at the moment. Not all of it bad. I've got, I've got to be honest with you. Some of it is very, very positive. So I've got a lot of, on my mind at the moment. And um, that's kind of why I haven't been talking out loud because ironically it's because I have too much going on in my head it's not because I don't have enough going on in my head it's because I have too much going on in my head and too much to do so it's like I don't necessarily have the room for maladaptive daydreaming these days I don't really have the room for it and also because I'm an older person my emotions are easier to manage especially seeing as I'm used to psyops torture anyway so my emotions are a lot easier to manage which is why I haven't been talking. So, you know, there is the attempt, there is the sort of um, attempt to kind of get me on camera saying something. I don't know. I don't know what these people are doing. I don't, I, I just don't understand how they think that's going to help them at this point. It's not going to help them. They know it's not going to help them. They're just clutching at straws. Because the main strength of gang stalking is also its main weakness. The whole point of gang stalking is to make sure that every single thing that you do has some negativity to it. When you get used to that, when you get used to literally every interaction being weaponized, when you get used to both compliments and insults being weaponized against you, when you get used to everything that you do, everything that you feel, everything that you experience, everything that you say, everything that you think, when you get to all get used to all that being weaponized against you, 
And then you have one instance where you say to yourself, okay, you've got all this information on me. How much information do you have on me exactly? Once you kind of challenge them on exactly how much they've got on you and how they got it, it, it's a wrap from there. It's over. It's over. The main strength that gang stalkers have is also their biggest weakness. They weaponize everything. And when you weaponize everything, where is there to go from there? People are used to you by now. People are used to your negativity. They're used to the fact that you don't have a limit when it comes to evil. They're used to that. So where else is there left to go? I mean, yeah, you can manage a few kind gestures here and there. You can manage to be innocent for like one or two moments. But a lot of people have read the laws of power by now. They're going to see through that. So where else is there left to go? It just feels a bit desperate. It just feels a bit desperate. Me, I'm still traumatized by the torture. It's true. I haven't left my house. I'm agoraphobic. I've got depression and anxiety and all that kind of shit from the torture. So I didn't escape from this, you know, unscathed. I didn't escape from any of this unscathed. I have a lot of shit to deal with. But at the end of the day, the difference between me and them is that I handle my malaise. I sit with it. I analyze it, analyze it and overanalyze it because I give a shit. They do no such thing. They refuse to do any such thing because if they had to look into themselves like one time, they'd crumble to nothing because it messes with their self-image of who they are as people and why they're doing what they're doing. It, it fucks with their self-image. It's only a select few people that can really look at themselves as gang stalkers and be like, I have no problem with what I'm doing. <laughs> very, very few. I promise you that. Very, very few, you know. So that's why all the spying and all the running around and all the trying to catch incriminate. Incriminating where? I'm being followed 24-7. What is there to incriminate me with? I spend most of my time in my damn flat. And when I'm not in my flat, I'm in public where tens of people are at a time. But what is there to get? What, what is there to get? Something that's not really that bad. Like, what is there to get? In comparison to what's been done to me and God knows how many other people, what is there to get? Another thing that I wanted to talk about, actually, whilst we're on the subject, kind of. Have you noticed that when it comes to certain diseases like Crohn's disease and, and diabetes, don't take my word for this. This is just what I'm, this is just what I'm observing, right? Have you noticed that a lot of the symptoms of some of these things seem to fall right? Is it Crohn's disease? Where you get pain in your body and you can't explain where it comes from? I think it's Crohn's disease. Yeah. So have you noticed that stuff like Crohn's disease and now the newest symptoms of diabetes sounds exactly like non-ionized radiation? They sound exactly like fucking radiation burns. Let me give you an example. There was one video that I saw on TikTok that was talking about the symptoms of diabetes. And one of the symptoms of diabetes was um, dark streaks around your neck, here, here, and the back of the neck, right? I'm looking at those, I'm looking at those so-called symptoms of diabetes, and I'm thinking that's fucking radiation. That's literally people being irradiated. It, so it really begs the question, how, like, on top of the standard deadly radiation, on top of the standard deadly non-ionized radiation that we're bombarded with every day, exactly how many people are being fired on with these EMFs and with these DEWs? Because on this person's TikTok video... We've got people saying, oh, I've got the same rashes on my body. I've got the same rashes, but I don't have diabetes. You know why that is? Because those are not signs of diabetes. Those are burns. Anything here, if it feels velvety anywhere on the body, that's a fucking 
burn. And now it's being reframed as diabetes. And you know why it's being reframed as diabetes? Because diabetes is one of the common illnesses that people that people get under um, being a targeted individual. If they're not caused diabetes through directed energy weapons, because the directed energy weapons dehydrate the body, upsetting the blood sugar levels. If they don't get diabetes through the electronic weaponry, then they get it through forced medications. Like one TI got. So now the ringing in the ears, first the ringing in the ears was, you know, was attributed to something as ridiculous as spiritual ascension. First the ringing in the ears is spiritual ascension. Then pain all over the body is fucking Crohn's disease. Now obvious burns on the body are treated as diabetic. Diabetic where? I said years ago that the way um, defense systems and pharmaceuticals would play it was that they would reframe the injuries of Havana syndrome as being diabetes or, or Crohn's disease or stroke, something like that, that they would add symptoms of Havana syndrome onto illnesses that are already categorized in order to cover their tracks. And it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. But then again, this is just something that I've observed. All right. This is just something that I've observed. What else was I going to say? So, yeah, that's what I've observed. So, yeah, it's getting to a point now where things are getting real desperate. They're getting real fucking desperate. How many millions of people are out of victims of Havana syndrome are there in the world? And it really begs the question, how are all these people being fired at with electronic weapons at the same time? Maybe that's where the chips come in. Maybe the chips initially were to gain energetic fingerprints on people, but then it kind of moved on from that. That's what I'm thinking. But it just really begs the question, how many TIs are there that don't know their TIs? This shit is wild. This shit is absolutely wild. How the fuck are you going to have, you know, non-ionized radiation all over the place and then try to add the symptoms of non-ionized radiation onto existing diseases and then try to cover your tracks with that? That's a whole new level of evil. That's why they need to spy on us. They better find something on us. Because God forbid anybody should turn an eye back to them. You know what I mean? That's, that's one of the things on my mind. Like, why is it that so many illnesses and so many, so many new developments like tinnitus, they're attributed to stupid things to take the heat off how many, exactly how many people have been subjected to Havana syndrome and non-ionized radiation. And let's get into how fast people are aging as well. Because on top of the nutritional deficiencies in our soil, and, the, and God knows how many fucking chemtrails in the air, on top of all that, we've got people sitting at their computers, itchy eyes, everything. One second, I think that's Amazon. Who is it? Amazon. Yeah, I thought so. Thank you. Thank this one, I don't know, was here already, so. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Yeah, Amazon. So, it really begs the question. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, it was Amazon. So it really begs the question, why are there so many diseases out there that are clearly non-ionized radiation? You see how they're playing in our faces? Shortness of breath, dizziness, dehydration from non-ionized radiation, the burns around the body, dehydration from non-ionized radiation. 
because there are people who have those same rashes and don't have diabetes. Watch heart disease is next. Heart disease is next because they're going to try to attribute um, symptoms of non-ionized radiation and DEW attacks and EMF attacks. They're going to try to attribute that to heart disease next. They're going to attribute that to strokes too. They've already fucking, you know, they've already fucking bamboozled everybody with cancer. They've already led people down the garden path when it comes to cancer. That's not being explained. The carcinogens within certain frequencies that we're using in technology that hasn't been addressed. The cancer causing directed energy weapons and electromagnetic frequencies, those haven't been addressed and those have been used for decades that haven't been addressed yet. And how how much how much is the cancer industry worth? Hang on, let's just check it out. Check it out. So cancer industry. Worth. So the cancer industry is worth two hundred and three point four two billion. <laughs> That was the worth in 2022. As of 2022, the global oncology market was worth 203 billion US dollars. So you're going to tell me that a global oncology industry has no motivation behind Hiding where the symptoms come from. How are pharmaceuticals going to make a profit if people aren't constantly sick? How are defense systems going to make their money if people aren't constantly fighting? Everything is happening for a reason. And let's not get into all the infections that these fucking EMS cause. All the on top of the cancers, the infections too that these EMFs cause. Let's not go there. You see what I mean? Way bigger shit on my mind. Way bigger shit on my mind. And then there's the erosion of bone cartilage in people's joints deliberately being done on top of the smart technology. And it's being done to children that haven't even come out of the womb yet, let alone to adults. Like I said, I got bigger shit on my mind, bro. I ain't got time for all this desperate crap. And it is desperate. Like I said... The greatest strength of gang stalking, whoop, the greatest strength is gang of gang stalking is also its greatest weakness. And you'd be surprised how well you can use that to your advantage. The problem is, is that when you are being tortured to that level, it's difficult to find the will and to find the strength to record everything that you're going through. This is a tactic that... I noticed that is, is present in more elevated narcissistic abuse. They inundate you with evidence, but it's the type of evidence that can only be built up over a certain amount of time. So every day they're going to bright you, every day they're going to engage in street theatre. But because they're inundating you with the evidence and the and it's very, very small examples of evidence, what they do is they inundate you with it to the point where you don't even want to focus on it. But then when you try not to focus on it, they'll make you focus on it. So the point is to overload you with their behavior on top of weaponizing what you do think and feel against you. The point is to overload you so that you won't fight back, so that you can't self-preserve, so that you can't hide anything from anybody. That's the whole point of why they do what they do. They do what they do to overload and inundate you. 
if they can't conceal the evidence of what they're doing and they can't because it's all over the place. They can't conceal the evidence of what they're doing. So what have they got to do? They've got to overload the evidence so that when you start talking, other people will be fatigued with listening to what you have to say, creating isolation. Then on top of that, the inundation with it, of evidence, it means that you can't get them on every single thing that they've done. That's a second reason why they inundate you with evidence and they inundate you with the crimes that they commit against you. That's the second reason. Because if you're too overloaded, you're not going to get everything. And if you're not going to get everything, then they can't be charged with everything, if they are at all. So the first element is to inundate you so that when you talk to other people, they're inundated and they shut off. Number one. Number two is to um, make sure that you don't get all the evidence, because if you get all the evidence, then there is a lot that they can be charged with if you get every single thing that you've got on them. A lot. And the third thing is, let me see if I can remember. See if I can remember the third thing. So the first thing is isolation, inundating you. Second thing is, yeah, the third thing is, is that the, the shit that they're doing is so childish and so ridiculous that the suspension of disbelief is severely tested. So this is a three-prong approach. Inundation. Inundation. Um, lack of evidence. And suspension of disbelief. Those are the three things that gang stalkers play with in order to ensure that we can't get justice. Because let's be real about the situation. We're torture victims. We're not, you know, we're torture victims and we're trafficking victims. We're also victims of pathological murder. So let's be real about the situation. What we go through every day is so heavy and it's so much hell that we won't always want to discuss the facts of what we're going through. Some of the shit that we go through is too shameful because on top of, vicious and vile things being done to us you know because of this innate need to survive and to carry on we can be embarrassed by the amount of shit that we've put up with and also feel powerless because nobody's doing anything about it so it can be a double it can be a double sided thing you know so that's why a lot of ti's quite often they can't speak up about what they see and what they experience every single time because it is just they have to deal with the shame and the guilt that's been passed off to them by their abusers on top of the fucking torture. So as much as the strategy of gang stalking is not really that clever, its simplicity is how it's able to get away with doing so much to us. The firing weapons on this part and this part now predictable that's what they do so yeah so me thinking about all of this on top of you know what's going on in other parts of my life i've just been way too busy to to focus on petty shit i haven't got the time you know and again the only reason i even tell you about the spying and about the um you know, the attempts to incriminate me is because those things might be important later. And also new moon is coming up. So they might try to use what I do during a new moon in order to try, try to paint me as crazy or try to get me sectioned. One of the two. I, I don't know what they plan to do. I can't. I can't be asked with it. They're just ridiculous. They're ridiculous. I'm, I know it's what they do, but it's like. I have no emotional attachment to what they're doing because at the end of the day, there are more important things than their feelings and what they... I don't give a fuck. There are people dying out here, people being genocided. What the fuck do I look like worrying about what these assholes do? I'm only reporting it to you because in the grand scheme of things, it might become important later. 
Because again, gang stalking uses petty details in order to amount to something big and awful. That's the only reason I'm talking about what they're doing. Beyond that, they are not important. Doesn't matter how much they want to be. So, anyway, I gotta go. Um, I hope that all made sense. It was just a little ramble, you know, I came online to just, you know, talk about some stuff on my mind. So, anyway, peace and blessings, you guys. I love you guys so much. Take care. Bye-bye.